all right this video is going to uh, be part two of the pegboard toy in part one we built the parts um, parts that we built in part one were the pegboard in pegboard round peg square peg triangle if you haven't watched part one you should watch part one first uh, unless you're just here for the assembly uh, so we're going to start by opening an assembly file that's a part file uh, file new assembly alright uh, I'm going to place although you can place multiple items at once I'm just going to go one at a time so I'm going to start with the pegboard and uh, notice that um, when you start when you click open it has uh, the pegboard here now if I click once it'll drop it down once I can click multiple times and it'll keep dropping multiple pegboards I'm gonna hit escape to get rid of this and then I'm gonna hit control Z because I actually only need one alright so first thing I'm gonna do with my pegboard is I'm gonna right click and I'm going to ground my pegboard uh, you want to ground it so it doesn't move around when you drop in your other pieces. Uh, I'm going to go place. And let's just go left to right here. We're going to start with the round peg. Double click. And I'm just going to go ahead and click once. And then hit escape. Um, we're going to be using constraint. Um, mate. Make sure it's on mate. And mate here as well. Uh, when we select the cylinder, you want to click in the middle of the cylinder, uh, showing the lines as indicated, the center lines. And you want to see the same line in the hole here. Click again. Then hit apply. And there's your mallet. Notice that the round peg will move. The round peg will move, but the the base will not because it's grounded. Alright, next, next let's drop in the triangle peg double click click once and escape and now this time we have to constrain two sides so I'm gonna start here one one apply and then I'm gonna move my triangle a little bit just so I can get in there and now I'm gonna constrain the other inside the other side here this inner side here and then I'll connect that here So now that should be good. If your uh, constraints are messed up, you can either go back hitting Control C, or you can always in the browser here delete your two constraints um, to bring it back to uh, start over again. All right, let's bring in the square peg. I'm going to go ahead and place. Uh, let's place the square peg. Click once escape I'm gonna go ahead and constrain so I'm gonna it doesn't really matter which of the four sides but you need to connect two sides uh, and the two sides need to be perpendicular to each other so I'm gonna click this side first and you don't have to but I'm gonna grab this side here apply um, now it's easier if you move your pegboard out of the way your peg out of the way just so you can grab the, the appropriate sides I'm gonna go ahead and constrain constrain this side of the peg to this side of the board go ahead and hit apply and that's what you should look like so far uh, next up we're going to place the end pieces so you only need to design one because you can drop in one two you don't need to design it twice so this one's going to take three constraints. There might be another way to do it where it takes less, but I find the three works well. The first constraint is going to be this middle part here. Let's get a better angle on that. The middle here. And I'm going to constrain that to, I'm going to make it here to this side. Hit apply. Uh, next up, I'm going to constrain or mate the top of the pegboard 
here to the top of the shelf, this little shelf here. And then the, th the third one that I'm going to do, and here's why I'm going to do this third one, is although it's connected, it still slides back and forth. So I'm going to use a flush constraint to make this front side flush with this front side. Now we're going to do the same three constraints to the other side. I'll go a little bit faster. One. I uh, didn't grab the right one there. I'm going to hit escape. Try it again. Uh, so it's the middle here to this side. Apply the top. with the bottom here and then finally I'm gonna make these flush sorry no well, I messed up there I gotta go back so I'm gonna do that one again I had to go back because I accidentally switched it to flush so it's the top there to the top here and these two are going to be flush constraint. Apply. Cool. There it is. Uh, if you want to color it, you can click on this one here. Choose your color. And then uh, you can drop. Your colors wherever you want here. I'll just hit control. Then hit the little check. There you go. Uh, so now for the mallet. Uh, for the mallet, I'm going to hit File, New Part. And I need to grab some information for the mallet. For the mallet details, uh, we're going to start with Sketch, Circle. And the circle is going to be uh, 5 eighths, I believe. So we're going to go 5 eighths, which is 0 0.625. Uh, we're going to extrude that by 8. Hit OK. Um, Actually, I'm going to come back to this part because there's some details that I need to get from the project itself. Actually, we can do it now. So we're going to click uh, 3D model. This one up here. And then I'm going to click on the top and bottom. And the number we want here is 0 0.0625. Double check on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we want to thread. And then you want to select the body here. Uh, here's the details that you want. I'll leave it here for you here. It's 0 0.625, 5 eighths, dash 11. And the behavior here, depth, is only one inch. All right, so I'm going to file, save this as my handle. I already have it saved there. And now I'm going to go file, new part. And now we'll create the top of the mallet. So for the top of the mallet, we want to start with a rectangle. I'll go ahead and work on the X, Y plane. Uh, starting on the center here, I'm going to go, let's look at the measurements. Uh, 0.875 wide by three inches in height. So it should look something like that. 
Again, that was 0.875 wide by three inches in height. Uh, now we're gonna add a couple circles. So starting at the top here, make sure when you drop your point, it's on the line. This should be 0.1. And then we're going to dimension it from the top, uh, 0.5. And then we'll do the same thing again on the bottom. Circle, make sure it's on the line. Point one, enter, dimension the point from the bottom line here, point five. Uh, next we're gonna trim a few parts off here. So we're going to use our trim tool we're going to trim the outer hemisphere and the diameter. Same on this side, we'll trim the outer hemisphere and diameter. Now that we have our basic shape, we will go to 3D model. We will go to revolve. Uh, profile is already selected for us and then the axis is this back part hit ok alright uh, this next part is a little tricky we're going to create a plane so 3d model plane and I'm going to open this origin here and I'm going to find the plane that's vertical for me, it's the XY plane, so I'm going to click on that. And then you want to click on the inner body here of the circle, of the middle part, the cylinder. Uh, and then there's our plane. So that's what we're looking for there. So now that we have a new plane, a tangent plane, we're going to go ahead and sketch point. And then we want to sketch on the plane here. Uh, luckily, uh, this plane is already centered for us, so we don't have to worry about dimensioning it. It's hard to see, but I did place a point there. So now I'm going to go 3D model hole, and it should automatically go to the hole that I, the uh, point that I put there. Uh, because I did this earlier, all of my options are already here, so I'm going to leave this here for you and just talk about them, and you'll have to change them. Um, make sure that the that this is a tapped hole. Make sure you change the type to unified screw thread. Uh, size is 0 0.625. The, the, the designation is 5 8 by 11. Uh, let's see. Uh, the tap, the threaded depth is 0 0.625. The entire depth of this circle or the hole is 0 0.875. Go ahead and hit OK. Uh, we're going to file save this as the mallet. So save. You'll save it as mallet. Again, I already have it, so I'm not going to worry about it. And now we go back to assembly. And I'll show you that little trick that I was talking about earlier. Place. You can grab multiple items at once. In this case, I grab the mallet and the mallet handle. Open. Uh, click once, hit escape, uh, constrain, we're going to use a, the insert type, and then we'll click here once, and in the middle there, hit apply, and we have a mallet, we'll go ahead and uh, change the color of that mallet, make it purple now we'll make it dark gray hit control to make it both dark gray hit the check there you go alright this concludes uh, the assembly part 2 pegboard and the mallet